Even if it's not correct, we're still at week number five of online distance learning. And I am so excited that you are joining me each week. I'm glad to be here with you. Today we've got a new week. We're going to continue on with some old stuff and we're going to do some new stuff too. So anyway, I hope you're out there. I hope you're ready to get going. Um, if you're not ready, go ahead and get your water, get a towel if you want. And while, while you're doing that, I'm going to get ready myself. So get that ready for you. Make sure you got some good water to use while we're working out and Mia's got a good dance picked out for us so I hope you're ready for week number five of online distance learning YouTube PE um, I still don't know what to call it but anyway I'm glad you're with me so this week we talked about for the next few weeks we're going to talk about a caring habit of the week and last week we talked about the um, caring habit of listening this week, we're going to talk about the caring habit of encouraging, all right? It's important to listen to people and to what they're saying, what they're going through, what they are, are trying to explain to you. Um, and I've always found that it is encouraging to me when people are listening, when they're giving me the time, they're giving me the respect of to stop talking and to listen to what I'm saying. So listening in and of itself is very encouraging. But then another thing that we can do is look for encouraging things to say to people. Okay, are there, are, are, is somebody in your house doing something well? Are you really happy with, are you thankful for your mom or your dad for how they've been providing for you and how your mom or your dad have been teaching you during this time? So make sure you go up and say, you know what, mom, you know what, dad, you're a really good teacher. Be encouraging. Take some time to show that caring habit with the people that you love and be encouraging. And even if there are some people that you're not too, too loving with, be encouraging. Find something encouraging to say about them. So that's our caring habit for this week, listening and then encouraging. And we are going to continue on talking about the daily five for the heart. Those five things are, if you remember, all right, say it with me, if you're out there, exercise, water, sleep, um, nutrition, and the caring habits. So daily five, do those things each day for your heart. Um, today we've got Clyde. He's got a new muscle with us. Clyde, I say hello to everybody. There he goes. He says hello. We're gonna we're gonna try some new things for warm up. Some things that maybe we haven't done in a while that you might remember. And then I've got a new some new skills in the hit workout. And of course, Mia's got a new dance for us. So uh, we're gonna stick with our ball and paddle. We got a new. Uh, skill that we're going to add to that we're going to take it to the next level we started out with just kind of balancing and getting a feel for the paddle now we're going to take it to the next level of actually aiming for a target and i'll show you how we're going to do that in a minute after let's see after the hit workout okay right now um, we're going to take a minute i'm going to kind of move everything back and we're going to get ready for our warm-ups so we're going to just kind of slide things back so i don't bump into things so you want to make sure you give yourself plenty of room if you're inside move things around so you can do your warm-up um, today I don't know if you remember this one but this one this one is really helpful for our second graders when we are working on remembering proper form for throwing okay and that was lunge with a twist so we're gonna lunge forward and we're gonna take our opposite hand so if we are lunging with our left foot we're gonna take our opposite hand our right foot and we're gonna go across our body and we're gonna turn and we're gonna bring it over here so very, very, very similar to the throwing motion, the proper throwing motion, where we start out and we throw and we twist. We took that leading forward. If you're throwing with your right hand, then you're gonna step with your left. If you're throwing with your left hand, then you're gonna step with your right. So lunge with the twist. So we're gonna do about, I think we're gonna do five of those, take about a uh, five second break, and then we're gonna do five more, and then we're gonna, a, we're gonna do a new one. This is called squat to hydrant. And after you see it, you might be able to figure out why they call it the fire hydrant. It's kind of a weird one for me, but it's a great exercise. 
and then we're going to do slow high knees. So I'll show you those and when we get ready. So the first thing we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to do about five lunges. Um, let's start off with our left leg, and we're going to go five, and then we're going to take our right hand, and we're going to cross our body, and we're going to do a lunge with a twist. So we're going to lunge out and twist, and then come back. That's one, and twist, and come back. Remember, it's just like the throwing motion. And twist, and come back. Practice that throwing motion. Twist, come back. Number four, and lunge, twist, come back. Now we're gonna start with our right foot. That means our left hand is gonna cross over body. These are also great crossover body exercises. So we're gonna step out and twist and come back. And step out, twist, come back. Remember, we're crossing, we want our body to turn the same way that our, the foot is coming out. So twisting to the right. Okay, that's three four, and five. All right, good lunges. All right, now we're gonna do squat to hydrant. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do five on one side, five on the other. We're gonna squat down and we're gonna come up and balance and bring our foot back and then down. That's one. Squat down and then up and then back in and then down. And squat and then up, back in, and down. Squat, up, balance, back in, and down. Last one, squat, and balance, back in, and down. Now we're gonna switch to the other leg, five on this side, and we're gonna squat, go up, balance, Oop, don't lose, if you lose your balance, try and get it, down. Squat, and up, Left leg is harder for Mr. Austin. And squat, and down, and balance, and down. Squat, and up, and down. And I think this is number five. Squat, and then, and down. Now, our last one, we're gonna do slow high knees. So we're just remember, this is just a stretch, kind of a warm up stretch. So we're gonna go high, and we're gonna bring it up. And we're gonna switch legs. Bring it up, high, so working on balance and our high knees at the same time. Balance, one leg on the ground, the other leg off the ground. Let's do about four more, two on each leg. All right, so that's our warm up. And right now, Clyde is gonna come up. You know what Clyde loves to talk about. And he is gonna talk to us about the muscles and how to take care of our muscles, what our muscles are used for. So today, it's a muscle that we haven't talked about in a while, but I wanna remember it again. And that is the big muscle that we always sit on, okay? Yes, I know some of you know it's the booty. And you know in my class, we want to call it the glutey because it reminds us of what? Mason, can you remember out there? Out there, okay. The glutey stands for, good job, gluteus, all right? Most people know gluteus, okay? Most people call it some other name other than that, but we're going to stick with our gluteys, all right? Instead of the booties, we're going to stick with the gluteys, all right? Easy, Clyde. And so, but Clyde does not want you to stop there. He wants you to know the full name. The, for the proper name for the gluteus, all right? And again, we've got twin Roman soldiers. Our first Roman soldier was the abdominus rectus, all right? And this one I think is even better sounding, the gluteus maximus, all right? Say that with me, gluteus maximus. Gluteus maximus. Gluteus maximus. All right, so the gluteus maximus. Very, it's, it's one of the largest and strongest muscles we have, and it is very important for moving our hips and our thighs. So when we're twisting, when we're, when we're squatting, when we are uh, even pulling, the gluteus maximus is engaged. So we take care of that. Again, helps us with lots of movement, walking, running, jumping, climbing, all sorts of things. So we wanna take care of that gluteus maximus. 
give it good, you know, when we're working, good stretches and take care of properly, get them warmed up when we're gonna be using it. All right, so that's it for Clyde today. So we're gonna set Clyde back down. We're gonna go inside and Mia has got a dance for us. I don't know what she has in store for us, but she's gonna get it set up for us and I'll see you in just a minute. Okay, bye-bye. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? But I've been to Cotton Eye Joe. I've been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? Welcome back, boys and girls. Hope you got your Cotton Eye Joe on, however that went. Hope you had a good time. Why is Cotton Eye Joe Cotton Eye? I don't know, because he's not polyester eyed. I have no idea. Don't know why he's called Cotton Eye Joe, but he makes a good dance. That's all we do know. All right, so we've done our dance, we've done our warm up, and now I think we're ready for a hit workout. Today we're hit workout. We're gonna do four. Last week we did five. We're gonna move these back just slightly, and we're gonna get ready. Okay, so we are gonna do jumping jacks. You guys all know that one. Then we're gonna do a bird dog. This is a new one, but I think it would be very good for us. It's a good exercise to work out with too, but it's also for those of us, and when we do our PE testing each year, um, this is good for balance. So we're gonna have, we're gonna go to a, from a five, six point balance point to a three point balance point. And I'll show you what those points are. And then we're gonna do plank push-ups. Another one that are, I think we've, we've kind of touched on those. You might remember those, but if not, I'll show you how to do them. And then a squat jump, all right? Again, the squat jumps, we're focusing on that gluteus maximus back there, and this is gonna really help us, okay? So if you're ready, um, I'm gonna get a sip of water, get my towel handy, because I need it. It's really warming up, which may, makes for some beautiful days, but also makes me sweat a little bit more when we're working out. Okay, so 
Jumping jacks, 25 seconds to jumping jacks. Are you ready? Here we go. And again, ready. you can go as fast or as slow as you want or if you need to. And if you're finding that at any point that you need to take a break, go ahead and stop, take a break, and then just pick it back up. All right, but the goal is to try and do it for 25 seconds without stopping. Okay, now bird dogs. I'm gonna do the side first. We're gonna get down like we're in kind of like the, uh, like look, look at like a dog position, and we're gonna lift one arm up, okay? And then the opposite leg is gonna go straight out. And we switch, we're gonna lift the upper arm, and the opposite leg is gonna go out like that. Okay, so we kind of point, one, and then two. You can go as fast or as slow as you want. You can creep up with Mr. Austin if you want. Okay, for plank jacks, we're gonna stay down here. We're gonna get on the planks on our elbows and we're gonna go up to our uh, plank push up, sorry, not plank jacks. Go up to our hands. So get ready for that. Or we can start on our up on our hands like a push up and go down to our elbows. Down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. I think our dog Molly just joined us. Here she comes. She's gonna help me with my plank push-ups. Good job, Molly. <laughs> That's a little too much help. All right, good girl. Okay, squat jumps. We're gonna go down to squat. We're gonna go up to a jump, okay? This is gonna be a little challenging. It's a challenging hit workout today. Remember, kindergarten to first, first or one time, First grade two times, second grade three. Unless you're going above and beyond. Squat, jump. Remember, if this is too slow for you, you can always go faster. Okay, second, first, second grade, ready for round number two. Jumping jacks. Here we go. Bird dogs down on the ground. So six points. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna go to three point because three of them are gonna come off the ground, two are gonna stay. I mean three. Down. Up. Try and keep that back straight best as you can. Point that finger straight out, just like we do on our testing. Okay, get ready for plank jacks, or I keep calling them, sorry boys and girls, plank push-ups. Plank jacks, we did plank jacks last week. All right, 
and squat jumps. Here comes Piper. Piper's coming on us. Check on us. Make sure you're going all the way down, not those lazy squats. Don't go halfway down. You're not cheating on me. Go all the way down. Keep your heel, your foot flat the whole time. Booty goes back, or glute goes back. Okay, second grade, stick with me. LSK1, you're going above me on. Round three of jumping jacks. Bird dogs, I'll go the other way, just so you can see on both sides. Okay, last round of plank jacks. Get ready. Okay, Whew. like I said, this is gonna be a little bit more work and two squat jumps. Remember, I'd rather you go slow and get your form right than try and rush it, go fast, and not have good form. All right. Whew. Okay, good. I'm a little winded after that one. So we're gonna take a break right now. I'm gonna set up for the skills. For the skills, you need your paddle and your ball, and we'll see you in just a minute. All right, boys and girls, bye-bye. Welcome back boys and girls. And like I said, for this one, we're still gonna be working on our paddles and you can use the one we made out of cardboard. Um, I went ahead and I made one out of wood for myself and I've got the templates, which I will share. Here's the template, what you're gonna do, I'm gonna share this after this video. You know, we're not gonna go through it on this video, but if you're interested, I'm gonna share, I'll be able to share a template with your um, parents that they can cut out and trace and then transfer that to a board, which way they can make. Or again, if you have a ping pong paddle. So we have three options for paddles. Um, and if you can't make either one of those, like you said, get a spatula, try that. That'll be really challenging. But any type of paddle, anything with the handle on it and something you can grip. I'm gonna be using the one I made. Like I said, I just made this out of cardboard over the weekend and kind of made it especially for me. So I, last week, I totally forgot to tell you, kindergarten, if you are still having a hard time, challenging time, hitting a ball, I want you to use a balloon. So just air it up about this big. And 
and then make your balloon, okay? So you can do that. Now, if you're gonna go outside and it's windy, it's really gonna be challenging with the balloon because the balloon is very lightweight and doesn't go. So this might be better for indoors, but if you don't have any access to any balloons, I have another way that you can make that we're gonna try, okay? Okay, and you get yourself a big plastic bag and a straw. So get one of these big, have a gallon sized plastic bags. Seal it off, and you've got a balloon that you can hit with your paddle and it will not pop outside in the grass. Your balloon will pop in the grass, but this won't. This is a little bit more durable, okay? And you can hit it. Remember, we worked on our forehand, which is the, the, the grip, we ha our hand, our fingers are up, and we're kind of just right across the thing there, okay? And that's where, if we were, gonna, if we were playing tennis or some type of racket sport like racquetball, we would be stepping with our opposite foot bringing it back, twisting, and then following through. And then our back hand, which is our hand twists a little bit, or the racket twists a little bit in our hands, and we come back, we step forward with the same foot as we're holding the racket with, and we follow through like that, okay? So now out here, it's gonna be kind of hard outside um, in using the, the lightweight balls in the outside, but if you were inside and you have this one, this will probably work good. But what I want you to do is get some type of basket. Okay, I brought out a laundry basket over here, and you're probably gonna to want to use more than one of the balls that we made. So if you made the, the uh, tinfoil ball, or you have another type of ball, you can use that. Or even if you're like, oh, I don't have any tinfoil, what I want you to do is go get some socks. Make sure it's okay with your parents. And you're going to take some socks. And you're gonna, don't, the bigger, the bigger the sock, the harder it is to roll up, but you're just gonna roll it up and up like that. And just make it, and roll it there. Now you got a ball that you can hit, and I made several. So what we're gonna do, start with our forehand, and you can get as close to the close to the basket as you want. If you need to be real close, and you just wanna stop, and you wanna try and go into the basket for there, we're just gonna kind of drop it and hit it into the basket. Now I think I've got a, some more socks out here, and oh, fortunately, I got some clean ones. Good, so remember, we're just gonna stop. Now if you have to start here like this, with it on your paddle, and just go forward like that, that's okay but I'd like you to work up to where you can drop it just ahead and go into the basket like that, okay? And if you're using a, if you're using a ball, again, just whatever ball you choose, drop it and try and go into the basket like that, okay? So that's what I want you to practice on. I want you to practice getting really good with your forehand. Just do as many as you can once they're all filled up, come back and get them, okay? And then come back, collect them all, and just go back, set them down, whatever you need, and start again, okay? Practice on getting them in the basket. Practice on accuracy, all right? I'm not too accurate right now. Mine are going all over the place, so I need a little bit more practice, don't I? All right, so that's what I want you to do. And remember, if you are finding that you're going all over the place like mine were, then step up a little closer and start a little closer, pick them up where they landed if you want, and try and get them in from wherever they landed, okay? The goal is we're just kind of practicing hitting a ball with our paddle into a target, okay? On our next PE, we're gonna see, we're gonna get multiple targets. We're gonna try and try and get multiple targets and we might move back a little way and then we'll try forehand and backhand. But for today, I just want you to work on your forehand practice. Remember, step in a little bit, dropping it or letting it roll off if you have to. That is totally okay too. If you're not, if you keep dropping it and swinging and miss, just start here and then just kind of push it forward like that. That's totally okay. But try and get your opposite foot, step forward, plant it forward and then come up, do a nice little forehand shot for that. Okay, so that's all of our um, skills that I have, want you to work on today. If you have to do it inside, that's great too. Just make sure you have plenty of room that you can set a target um, and you can, you can even make a target. You could just put a circle on the ground and try and get them in that circle. Whatever you have around the house that will help you, 
Um, you can use a garbage can, you can use um, a box, anything that will help you catch some things and so they're not going all around. But if all you have is like a circle or a hula hoop or something on the ground or a jump rope, you wanna make a circle out of it, you can do that, okay? So that's our skills for today. Hope you had a great day. We're gonna, gonna see you in just a minute. Um, we're gonna close out with the dad joke of the day and I got a good one for you today and the fruit of the week, okay? I'll see you in just a minute, bye-bye. Hey, give me my sock back. Welcome back boys and girls, and hope you're ready to finish up. Um, today, I wanna look at some of the things we talked about. Remember, we talked about our caring habit of the week is encouraging. We talked about uh, remembering the daily five for the heart, which is if you're out here at least 30 minutes every day doing something, you are taking care of your heart, at least. If you, more is even better. Um, and we talked about our muscle of the week is the gluteus maximus. So I want you to remember that and we worked on our paddle. So right now we're gonna finish off with our fruit of the week and the fruit of the week, again, um, happens to be one of my favorite fruits. I have a couple of favorite fruits. Grapes are one of my favorite fruits, especially green grapes. And green gra grapes come in a variety of colors, but green and some of the red are my favorite. Are really, the green seedless grapes are my favorite. Um, green grapes are a great source of vitamin C and vitamin K, and they are rich in antioxidants. Um, really good help. They, they, they've been linked to helping with heart disease, um, diabetes, uh, even obesity. So just eating grapes. I know that for me, um, one, I, you know, eating a lot of grapes really helps me kind of bring, keep my weight under control. And that's a great thing. So I really enjoy grapes. Um, grapes, like I said, are rich in antioxidants, which help us with, um, uh, you know, just our cells regenerating and studies have been linked to that and how it kind of helps your cells rebuild. And so grapes are a great source of that. A um, couple of fun facts about grapes. Grapes are actually considered berries. Remember how like a uh, tomato is not considered a fruit, or I mean a vegetable is actually considered a fruit, and, and strawberries are considered from the rose family. Well, grapes are berries. They're, so they're, they're kind of in that category. The world, here's a second fun fact, the world record now, I don't know if I can do this. The world record for eating grapes is 205 grapes. Somebody ate 205 grapes and had to pick them up in three minutes. That's crazy. I can eat maybe, this might be like a serving. I might eat this in about five, 10 minutes. But anyway, so grapes. Go out and get some, plenty of grapes at the store. Um, I like to get them when they're, when they're nice and firm. I don't like to get them if they're too mushy. But um, anyway, we'll have some more fun facts for you on our next PE time. And so let's finish up with our dad joke of the day. So this one, I heard this one, one of my favorites. Okay, hope you like it too. So, what is the difference between Dubai and Abu Dhabi? Okay, I want you to think about that. Okay, there's, there's places, there are places. What is the difference between Dubai and Abu Dhabi? Now, Mia's gonna like this one. Okay, here it is. Dubai don't like Flintstones. Abu Dhabi do. <laughs> All right. Anyway, boys and girls, had a fun day with you. If you want to stick around, and, and um, I'm going to make another video um, about how to use a template to make the paddle. If you want to tell your parents, that's only if you want to make the paddle, you don't have to. They don't have to watch the video, but if they're interested in making your own wooden paddle, that's a little bit more sturdy than the cardboard. I'll make a separate video for that and I'll post that on our, on your classroom channels too. Okay. Love you boys and girls. I miss you. Have a great week. Bye-bye.